Hi, I'm Randall Bolton. I'm the author of Painting with Numbers, presenting financials and other numbers so people will understand you. Well, Painting with Numbers is different from the concept of financial literacy in a couple of ways. First of all, financial literacy is usually under, understood to mean an audience's ability to understand financial numbers, whereas painting with numbers is about presenting numerical information, although it's of course important for the audience to understand that they should be able to understand numbers if they're properly presented. The second distinction is that painting with numbers is about presenting any kind of numbers, not just financial numbers, although certainly financials are the kinds of numbers that are most frequently presented when numbers uh, are presented. Quantation means the act of presenting numbers so an audience can understand you. It's a word I coined for painting with numbers because I was looking for a single word like writing or speaking to describe this craft or skill. Uh, just so you understand, it's, it's a formation from quantitative and communication. So it's what's called a portmanteau word. I dislike pie charts because there's almost no information in a pie chart. A pie chart is, turns out, is an inefficient way to present a very small number of data points in a very large space. Not only that, uh, because pie charts go around in, in a circle uh, and the information is at different angles, it's almost impossible for the reader to get any sense of the scale except the, the broadest possible scale. So of all the ways you can present information graphically, pie charts are usually the most ineffective. I want to add a second point uh, uh, following up on, on pie charts, and, and that is that often graphs can be overused. Graphs are a very powerful way uh, to get certain points ac across, especially when there's a trend or a pattern in the information. Uh, but if that's not the case, you're often better off using a table uh, rather than trying to present a graph just on the presumption that some people like uh, have, have different cognitive preferences. Well, the first thing I want everyone to understand is that presenting numbers is a communication skill, just like writing or speaking our communication skills. And that means it's important to understand the basic rules of grammar. It's important to understand how you're organizing your thoughts in a way uh, that your audience uh, can understand them. Second, one way to think about many of the reports you produce is they're just paragraphs, except that the paragraphs involve numbers. That when a reader looks at an income statement, let's say, they're forming English language sentences in their mind, like, well, let's see how revenues were this year compared to last year. Or let's see how big a port, how large a portion of expenses are going to sales and marketing, that kind of thing. So that even though it's numbers on the page, what the audience is doing is constructing sentences and paragraphs in their minds. I'd say that's absolutely true, and all, all you have to do to see that is to see the, the debate that's, that's going on now about important numbers like taxation and health care. It, it's a little bit like watching blindfolded boxers going after each other. And it's, and it, it's, a, it's a tragic result, and, it's, and it's, an, it's very important information for the electorate uh, to understand. I think there are two things going on. The first thing is that presenting any kind of numbers 
is a skill that has to be learned. Uh, it's an important skill, and I'm not sure that people in the public policy arena are any less lacking in that skill than other people who present numbers for a living, such as financial results. But we could certainly do with a clearer, uh, more succinct presentation of really important numbers. I, th I think there's one other thing that goes on in, in the public policy arena that I think happens less in, in the financial numbers arena, and that is that so much of the information that's presented is driven by the agendas of the presenters. Uh, the best defense against that is the same defense against people who are either deliberately or on purpose misleading their audience with words, which is audiences that are sophisticated, that know how people should be communicating, how they like to be communicated to, and demand that kind of communication with numbers from their, from their presenters just as they demand that with words. In some ways, we already do have a common language. Uh, income statements are income statements. Uh, and generally accepted accounting principles defines the rules of financial statements, uh, at least at the highest level. So in that sense, a common language already exists. But more than that, specific every specific organization, every company, every not-for-profit, every government agency, is a little bit different. And within that organization, they need a common language. So managers and other participants in that organ, other stakeholders in that organization, can speak to each other and understand each other, even if one of them's in finance and another one's in sales and another one's in engineering. A common language that's specific to that uh, organization can be very helpful. The rules and best practices that I propose in my book are very similar to the basic rules of grammar, like the subject agreeing with the verb or spelling in, in a certain way. I start with a very simple one. Uh, always write justify your numbers. Another example of rules and best practices has to do with looks, is to make sure that you use white space effectively so that your reader can create intuitive groupings of important groups of numbers, like quarters within a year, or expenses versus revenues, or something like that. So there's, there are lots of these rules and best practices, but the best way to think of them is they're very similar to the grammar that we spent years learning. Technology is both helping and hurting. Uh, first of all, it, it, it's helping enormously. We've had twin revolutions in the last 30 or 40 years in computing and in communications. And the computing revolution has given us tools to collect information uh, through databases and present it through tools like spreadsheets so that all of that information can be collected and presented in ways just imagine what that was like when you had punch cards or even before punch cards and you had to present that information in reports typed on a typewriter. Uh, so the computation tool is a huge contributor. The second one is communication, which means that once you produce this information for people, you can distribute it in all kinds of ways very quickly to anyone in the world. So that's the good side. The disadvantage, the way that it's hurt, is even people who are unskilled at presenting information have the ability to present information. It's easy. You collect it in a database, you throw it in a spreadsheet, and you email it out to, to thousands of people. And it may not be skillfully done. The second thing is, because it's so easy to present all this information, and lots of people have written about this. We're just deluged with information, and it's very hard to pick out the important stuff from the rest of the stuff.
A bad presentation of numbers can lead to major mistakes, uh, to poor decisions, simply because the audience, the person who's making the decision based on the information, doesn't understand what he's reading. And that's often not just because it's poorly presented, but it might be understandable if the audience devoted a lot more time to it, but people don't take that kind of time. They take 10 or 15 seconds to look at a financial statement or a report, and then they may go ahead and make a decision based on that. So it's very important to recognize that not only do you have to present information properly, but you need to present it in a way that your audience can grasp the important meaning quickly. In fact, I would say doing that is a gesture of respect to your audience, and that's an important thing to consider. Well, I would ask you to compare to little mistakes that people make when they communicate. For example, when you see somebody's writing, in his writing he clearly demonstrates that he doesn't know when an apostrophe goes in the word it's. Even though that's a mistake that almost never makes the sentence impossible to understand, you form conclusions about that person's literacy. If a person stands up and gives a speech and he's not properly dressed for his audience or he uses uh, inappropriate words uh, to express himself, even if he's being completely articulate and clear and intelligent, you form conclusions about that person. It's inherent in the way we communicate that people form snap conclusions about your intelligence, about your character, about your work ethic, about your respect for your audience. And sometimes those things are in spite of how good a presenter you are. Presenting numbers is no different from any other form of communication in that respect. Well, first of all, as, as I've discussed before, numerical literacy, most of us understand numerical literacy to mean understanding uh, uh, numbers or financial information, but it's also about Literacy is about presenting, just as having good grammar and speaking clearly is about the presenter's literacy, not just about the audience's ability to understand that. But anybody who presents numbers, his or her principal goal is to be understood. And as a result, even if the numbers are right, if they're not understood, that presenter hasn't achieved his or her purpose. Unfortunately, we're usually not. Math is taught as a computational skill. There's no notion of using math as a language for expressing complex problems and situations. And that's kind of a shame. Math aptitude and the ability to communicate with numbers, the distinction is similar to the distinction between any particular skill area or area of knowledge that one's understanding of a subject is not necessarily related to how effectively you can communicate that information to other people. Well, let me, let me just end, if you will, with the single most important thing about painting with numbers, and that is that presenting numbers is a communication skill. It's not a computational skill. It's not a math skill. It's not a black art that only the, quote, numbers guys can do. It has rules and best practices, much like the grammar, sentence structure, vocabulary, paragraph organization, all of those literacy skills we spent years learning in an effort to turn ourselves into effective writers and speakers.